Hey you guys, what's up? My name's Jason and today I'm going to be taking you through this cool little tutorial on how to create pixel art for games. Now this tutorial is set up to be very simple, anybody can do it, you can learn how to animate pixel art and create it. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So first we're going to start with our character. So I did a small little sketch of my character and then I uploaded that into Photoshop and then I brought the size down to 90 pixels by 90 pixels. Next, you want to go ahead and set your document up for creating pixel art. So we need to come to edit, come down to preferences, and then we're going to come up to general. And we want to change our image interpolation from whatever it's set to, to nearest neighbor. If you don't do that, you're going to get anti-aliasing and your pixel art is not going to look good. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Then we want to make sure that we're using our pencil tool instead of our brush tool. And then we're going to go ahead and draw with that. So you see here, I have the color pink selected and I just brought my brush size up so I could click a circle right there for the head. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the body. Except actually we need to undo that because we wanna make sure we do this on a separate layer from our sketch layer. So we're gonna come over here to our layers panel and click the new layer icon and then we'll go ahead and create that circle for the head. And I need to click a little bit harder so I get the full size. Then I'm gonna bring my brush size down like so and I'll make the body just like so. And then I'll make the other half like so. And I've got one sticking out right over here, so I'm just going to go ahead and use my eraser. And I also want to make sure that my eraser is set to pencil. So right now it's set to brush. I'm going to go ahead and change that to pencil. And then I'm going to go ahead and go in there and erase those two little squares away, like so. Next, let's go ahead and add in the legs. So I'm going to switch back over to my pencil tool, and I'll bring my brush size down. And I'll just go ahead and quickly draw those in like so. And I'm holding down shift to get a perfectly straight line. Then I'll go ahead and do the same for the other side. And actually what I'll do is I'll go ahead and use my lasso tool, which is this tool right here. And I'll go ahead and select that leg like so. And then using the grab and move tool and holding down alt on my keyboard, I can go ahead and drag that leg over so I get an exact replica of it. And I'll drop it right about there, hit enter. And then we need to fill in that small little gap right there. Using my brush tool, I'll fill that in like so. And I accidentally got a little bit of an area that I didn't want. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that away. Perfect. And one leg is actually longer than the other. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and select this leg. And I need to move it up. There we go. So now they're on the same level. Great. Next, I need to go ahead and add in the antennas on my character. I really like adding antennas to my characters. They're just kind of my signature thing. And I, I like them. So I'm going to go ahead and use my brush tool. I'm going to bring it all the way down to one pixel and I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. So I'm just going to draw in a line like so and then I'll go ahead and add in some thicker detail up here towards the top in the antenna like so. And I'm not getting enough of a round curve so I'm going to go ahead and undo a couple of those brush, brush moves I just did. And I want to bring that down a little bit lower like so. And then what I can do is I can go ahead and turn off my background drawing and then I'm going to add a layer behind that and fill it in with a dark gray color. This way I can see the shape of my character and I can go ahead and work with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in there and using my erase tool, I'm gonna start taking away whatever I don't want. And I think that looks about good. It all looks about even. So we have two, 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 one. And then that that's because that's where it transitions to two going horizontally. So you just wanna make sure that everything is nice and even so it looks nice and smooth. I also want to make sure that I move my head over just a tiny bit. So I'm going to go ahead and use my marquee tool and make sure I'm on a rectangular marquee tool. And I can go ahead and select my whole head right down to the bottom like so. And I'm going to nudge that over so it's right in the center of my neck. Perfect. Then I'm going to go ahead and unselect out of that. And I'm actually noticing that this side of the head looks different than the other side. So what I, what I can do is I can go ahead. So what I can do is I can go ahead and use my marquee tool. And I can select this side of the head. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my grab and move tool, hold down alt and drag over a copy like so. And then I'm going to use my transform tool by hitting control T, right click and flip that horizontally, hit enter. And then I'll go ahead and drag that over into place so it lines up. And basically everything looks the same on that side except for this extra line of squares. I'm not sure why that's there, but we can go ahead and erase it. We'll go ahead and erase that antenna also. And holding down shift, I'll just erase a straight line going down. Perfect. So now it's way more symmetrical. Next, let's go ahead and add in the second antenna. So I'm going to go ahead and use my lasso tool and I'm going to draw around my antenna like so. 
And then I'll go ahead and use my grab move tool, hold down alt and drag over a copy like so. And we wanna drop it in the same spot as our other antenna. So about there should be good. I'm gonna to need to nudge down one with my arrow keys. Great. So now we have the basic shade for our character. I'm gonna add in a little bit of shading detail. And the way I'll do that is by coming over to my pink color and I'm gonna grab a darker version of that pink color. And I might even become a little bit more saturated. Hit okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line right underneath here in the bottom, just to add a little bit of a cast shadow underneath there. And I might even add some on my two legs. So like so. Next, let's go ahead and add the eyes in for our character. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my pink color and the eyes are just gonna be a very, very dark reddish pink color. So we'll come down into there, hit okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw my first eye in. I'm gonna bring my brush size up like so. I'm also going to add a new layer to that so that they're on a separate layer. And then I'll go ahead and draw the first eye in right here. And that's too wide, so I'm gonna bring my brush size down once. And I'll draw a line like so. And then I can go ahead and use my erase tool to erase away what I don't want. So I don't want those ones, but that's the basic shape I want for my eye. So now I can go ahead and use my grab and move tool, hold down alt and drag over copy to the other side like so. All right, perfect. So now we have the basic character. Next, let's work on the animation. So when you're creating animations for your characters in Photoshop, you need to use the animation timeline tool. And the way you bring that up is by coming up to window, coming down to timeline, and then you're going to create a frame animation. If this isn't set to frame animation, hit this drop down arrow and click on frame animation. And then you can go ahead and click that and it'll create your timeline. What we want to do is we want to add in a couple frames in there. So I'm going to add in four frames to start off with. And if we need more, we can add more in. So there's our first frame. So our character is just standing there, but then our character is going to start running. So when it starts running, he's going to put one leg out and the other leg is going to go back. So let's go ahead and create that frame. So first what I want to do is I want to select all these layers. And then I'm going to make a copy of them by hitting control J. And then I'm going to right click and merge all those layers. So now that's all one layer for that character, but we still have all of our original layers. I'm gonna select all those, put them into a folder just in case we ever need them again and we need to make changes to our character. And also so we have our generic standing pose. And I'm gonna turn off that folder and now we can go ahead and really start animating. So this is our first frame and we want the legs to spread out in this frame. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and use my lasso tool and select this leg right here. And using my transform tool, I'm gonna to go ahead and rotate that. But before I do that, I need to make sure that this up here, my interpolation, is set to nearest neighbor. That way we get that nice pixely look without any anti-aliasing. So then I'll go ahead and rotate this. And you do that by coming out to this corner area, clicking, and then rotate. And I'm gonna rotate that to about there so that the leg looks pretty normal because in some of those rotations you saw it was looking really weird but this right here should work. Then I'm going to go ahead and reselect that and drag that over like so. I'm also going to go ahead and enlarge that by clicking in this corner and bringing that up like so. And then I can actually bring that down just a little bit like so. Then I want to make sure that my character stays down here at this bottom level. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and mark that. So I'm going to mark that on a new layer and just using the color white and using my pencil tool, I'll go ahead and make a one pixel mark. So I know that right down there is where my floor is. So this leg needs to come down to there. So what I'm gonna do now is come down back down to my character layer and using my arrow keys on my keyboard, I'll push that down until it lines up right on top of that pixel. So now it stays at ground level. Then we can go ahead and delete away this leg. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my lasso tool, select that leg and delete it. Then I want to go ahead and fix this leg. So I'm going to go ahead and select my dark pink color and fill in some of these pixels here that got taken away. All right, perfect. I'm also going to use my eraser to take a few pixels away on this side. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my pencil tool to add in a few pixels on that side. Then I'm going to go ahead and use my lasso tool to select this leg and I can even select part of the body. Then I'm gonna go ahead and drag a copy over like so. And then I'm gonna turn on my transform tool, right click and come up to flip horizontal. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And then I can go ahead and drag that into place and we want it to line up in the same spot on that side. 
So I think right about there is good. Go ahead and unselect out of that. Next, we want to animate these antennas. So they need to go back and a little bit down. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and use our lasso tool to select them. And then I'm just going to go ahead and drag them down like so. And I'm also going to rotate them a bit like this. Then I'll hit enter. Then I need to go ahead and clean these up a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and select my pink color. I'm going to go ahead and redraw some of this in like so. And because this is going to be in motion, each frame does not have to be absolutely perfect. It's better if it is, but it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It's going to be showing these frames so fast that you're almost not even going to see them. So something like so should work. And like I said, if you want, you can take the time to make sure that these are all evenly spaced out and look good. So now let's go ahead and move on to our next frame. So in our next frame, our character is going to come back to standing pose, except the antennas are still going to be flying back. So let's go ahead and come down to our group folder, and then we're going to go ahead and make a copy of that folder, drag it up here to the top like so, and then we can turn that on, and we can turn this back layer off. And then let's open that copied folder, and we're going to select all these layers and merge them together, and we can actually merge it with the folder, so that way it's its own layer. So now it's going to go from that frame back to this frame, except we need to take the antennas and change them. So we're going to go ahead and use our lasso tool once again. I'm going to go ahead and use a transform tool and rotate those like so. Bring them somewhere out over here. Hit enter. And then we can go ahead and fix those. So the more we rotate them, the more messed up they get. So you always need to make sure you go back in there and fix them. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create the next frame. So the next frame is going to be pretty similar to this first one. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and copy this frame, drag it above the last frame we just created. Then we can turn all of our frames off except for this one that we're about to create. And what we want to do in this one is we want the legs to cross like so. Instead of being spread apart, they're going to be crossing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select this leg right here and try to get all of it, including the dark pink parts. And then I'm going to go ahead and I actually missed a part right here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. I'm going to go ahead and drag that over here and now we can work on it. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and fill this whole thing in with this light pink color. So I'm going to go ahead and fill each square in with that light pink. Like so. And then if we come back to our body, I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this stuff that's hanging over the edge. And then let's go ahead and select this leg right here and we're going to drag it over to this side. So I'm going to go ahead and use my lasso tool and draw around the edge of that leg. I want to make sure I add that pixel in right there too. And then I'll go ahead and drag that over like so. And before it was at that level so we want to make sure we keep it at that level. We're going to bring it to right there. Perfect. Next I'm going to go ahead and select this light pink color. And then I'll go ahead and brush along this bottom area like so. Just fill in over the top of that. And then I'm going to go ahead and select my dark pink color and add in some more shadow in there. So I'll add shadow along that bottom like so. Oops, got a little bit too much over that edge. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that square back in. Perfect. So now we have that leg. Then we just want to take this leg and put it in front of that one. So I'm going to go ahead and use my lasso tool. Drag that over like so. We want it to line up in the same spot and be on the same level. So we want it about there. Perfect. Next, we need to go ahead and animate those antennas. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my lasso tool. And we want these antennas to change up a little bit so they don't look exactly the same as they did in two frames ago. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate these a little bit more. Like so, and bring them right about over here, hit enter. And then using my erase tool, I'm going to go ahead and erase away some of these weird ones that are sticking off the ends and really start shaping those antennas back into place. And now we have the third frame. Now let's go ahead and create our fourth frame. Our fourth frame is very simple. It's just going to be a copy of this frame right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control J to copy that, drag it above all my other frames. And now we have all four of our frames. It's going to loop through all these frames and appear like our character is running. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So the way we set up our animation in our timeline is we need to start in frame one. 
and we need to turn off all the layers that we don't want to see on that frame. So whatever is on is what's going to show on that frame. So we want to turn off this frame right here, this one, and we want to turn on this frame one layer. Then we're going to come to frame two and we need to turn off frame one and turn on frame two. Then we're going to come to frame three and we're going to turn on the frame three layer and turn off the frame one layer. And then we'll do the same thing for the fourth frame. So we'll turn off this frame one layer and we'll turn on the fourth frame layer. So now we can go ahead and switch between these and see how that looks. All right, great. So now let's go ahead and watch this and see how it looks when it animates. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And now our character is moving too fast and it's not looping. So what we need to do is we need to change this once to forever. And then we need to click all the way across our characters and select all the layers. And where it says zero seconds, we need to change that to 0 0.1 seconds. So it'll play a little bit slower. Then let's hit play, see how that looks. All right, cool. So it's not exactly perfect and you can spend a lot more time, especially with the antennas, but it definitely looks like our character is running and it'll do for our game. Now let's go ahead and create our background for our character. All right, so I've created a new document that's 500 pixels by 282 pixels. What we wanna do is we want to start creating our background layer by layer. So we're gonna start with the background part of our layer. So the background is going to be some woods. So what we need to do first is we need to decide what color our background is going to be. And since our character is pink, I want it to contrast with it. So I wanna make it more of a blue color. So I'm gonna come into my very light blues and I'm gonna drag this up a little bit more into the blues. So somewhere about up in here should be good. Almost a white blue, hit okay. Then using my fill tool, I'm gonna to go ahead and fill that in. So there's my background color. Next, we can start adding in more detail. So I'm gonna add a new layer above this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create my trees. Now, before I do that, I wanna figure out where my ground plane is. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my marquee tool to select a rectangle like so, and then I'll decide where that's gonna be. I think right about down here should be good. And then I can go ahead and just fill that in with a black for now, or let's actually do a dark blue so it doesn't distract too much. And we can always come back and change that color. Next, I need to add a layer underneath that, and that's where we're gonna start creating our trees. So our trees are just gonna be very simple, rectangular shapes like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and just fill that in with a darker color. So I wanna select my background color here, and I just wanna make sure that I'm using a darker color. So something like so, that might be a little bit, yeah, about there should be good. Hit okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and go in there and add some detail. And before I do that, I actually wanna go ahead and drag a copy of this over like so. And I also want to go ahead and merge these two layers together. So now those two are one layer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select this color and make sure that I'm using a darker version when I add in my detail. And I'm just going to add in some lines in there with a one pixel brush. So I can zoom in there to see what I'm doing. I just wanna start adding in some random lines and detailing. And some of the lines can go all the way across the tree like so. We can even add in a knot every now and then some lines around it, just like so. But we wanna to try to keep this very simple because the style of this artwork is simple. Once you create your characters, you wanna use that as a base for your style choice. All right, great, that looks good. Let's go ahead and do the other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some lines just like I did on this one, but we want them to be random, so we want these ones to be different. All right, great. So now we have two tree trunks. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use our grab and move tool and drag some copies over like so. And we're gonna drag these into random areas. So we might drag one right, right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and drag another one right over here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the transform tool for that one, right click, and we're going to flip it vertically. And then we're gonna right click and flip it horizontal like so. And then we're also going to stretch it out just a tiny bit. And that will kind of change it up just a little bit so all of our trees don't look exactly the same. Now, some of them can also be closer together, like so. I'm gonna bring that one down too and stretch it out. I hit enter. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do this one last time. So I'll go ahead and drag a copy of this one over here. And then I'm gonna turn on my transform tool, right click and flip it horizontal. 
Great, so now we have some trees for our background, but that's not enough trees to make up woods. We need to have layers of trees. So this is our first layer, and it's going to be the darkest layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of my tree layers, and I'm gonna right click and merge layers. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of this layer. And with this copy, I'm gonna go ahead and use my transform tool, right click and flip horizontally like so. Then I'm gonna go ahead and shrink these down just a tiny bit like so. So they're a tiny bit skinnier and then I'm gonna stretch them up taller so they make it all the way to the top of our document. I'm gonna drag those over here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control U or Command U if you're on a Mac. And I'm gonna go ahead and change my lightness and I'm gonna bring it up to about plus 21 and then I'll hit OK. And I want these trees to be behind my darker trees like so. And then we're gonna do this again. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of these trees. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag these into a different position like so. And I want these to be flipped horizontally also. And I can drag these wherever I'd like. So maybe somewhere back here like so. Or maybe actually more over here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and bring up my hue and saturation panel once again and lighten these. We can even change the hue of them if we want. So I can change them to more of a pink color. I think that looks pretty interesting actually. And then I'll hit okay. And so now we have our trees in our background and it looks pretty interesting. Next, let's go ahead and create our ground. So what we wanna do is we want to create a new document and our document is going to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Hit okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a pattern. So I actually like this color for my ground, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that and make that the base color. Then I'm gonna go ahead and create a crisscrossing pattern. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer and create a line coming straight across like so. Then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate that and holding down shift so I can rotate it at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. So now we have a perfect 45 degree angle line made out of our pixels. I'm gonna drag that to about there. And I'm going to go ahead and use my Alt key to drag over a copy like so, and I'm going to get that lined up so it comes over to my other side. Then I'll merge those two layers together. Then I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to go ahead and copy it and paste it, and I'll drag this one over to this side like so. Then I can go ahead and fill this area in. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw that in. Then I'm going to go ahead and merge these two layers together. And I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of that. Turn on my transform tool. And I'm going to flip it horizontally. So now we get an X shape going through there. Then I'm going to nudge that over so it lines up with the corners. Then I'll hit enter. Great. Now let's go ahead and save this out as a pattern. You do that by coming up to edit. And then you're going to come down to define pattern. And we're going to call this X. Hit OK. Then let's come back into our background document. And then we're gonna go ahead and select this shape up here for our ground layer by holding down Control or Command if you're on a Mac, and then you'll select that thumbnail on that layer, and that will make a selection around your shape. Then we're gonna go ahead and use our Fill tool, and we wanna make sure that we change our fill from foreground to pattern, and then we want to change our pattern with this drop-down menu to our X. Then we can go ahead and fill our pattern in like so. So now we have our pattern there, great. Now lastly, for my ground layer, I'm gonna go ahead and add a line of sort of a green color. So I'm gonna cut more of a minty color, so somewhere in there. And then I'm gonna bring up the lightness just a tiny bit, hit okay. I'm gonna put a brush line right across this top area. It's gonna be pretty thick, so about that thick like so. So now we have our ground level. Next, we wanna go ahead and add in our foreground plants. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up my brush size to about there. And then I wanna go ahead and select this blue I have here for these trees, and I wanna get a darker version of that. So I'm gonna come down to about there, hit okay. And then I'm gonna add a new layer. And then using my brush tool, I'm just going to click some random spots like so. Now that's not looking dark enough for me, so we can always come back and darken that with our hue and saturation panel. So I'll add in a few random plants like so. And I wanna bring down my brush size and do some smaller circles like so. And this will just give us sort of a random sort of bush type foreground, and it creates that shape very quickly. And it's a little bit too high, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my arrow keys to nudge that down to about there. 
Now I'm going to bring up my hue and saturation panel, and I'm going to darken that a little bit to about there, and bring up my saturation, then hit OK. And then I want to bring up the lightness of this darker area on my ground. So I'm going to go ahead and come to that layer, turn off my plant layer so I can see what's going on. And then I'm going to go ahead and select this area like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and come into my hue and saturation right here, click that. And then it's only going to affect the area I just selected. So what I want to do is I want to bring down the lightness or bring up the lightness to about plus 16. So now that's much lighter and it will make our foreground stand out much more. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of detail to my foreground. So I'm going to go ahead, select this color, and find a lighter version of it. Hit OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and brush in some small little dots in there, just to make it look more interesting. And these ones kind of look funny, so I'm going to go ahead and refill those in. Then I can go ahead and select my blue again, and find a darker version of that, and add in some random dots with that darker color too. Great. So now we have our background completely finished. Now what we can do if we want is we can bring in our character and have it play its animation. So this isn't actually gameplay animation. You would have to do that when you program your game or in Unity. But in this case we can get a quick preview of what our character might look like in action. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select all of our frame animations and we're going to drag those into our document and we want to make sure we drag them into our background document. We'll drop them in like so. And then we want to go ahead and bring this down so it's at the correct level of our floor. And then we want to go ahead and create a frame animation. And we'll do the same thing again. So we're going to add all four of our frames and then starting on frame one. We only want that one turned on. Then we'll go on to the next one and we want to turn off our frame one and turn on our frame two layer. And we'll continue to do the same thing like we did when we set up our animation in our other document. So now we have that set up, so now our character is going to switch between all of those. We can go ahead and play that. Let's change this to forever, now let's play it. We also want to change our timing from 0 seconds, so we'll select all of those, and we want to change it to 0 0.1 seconds, and now let's play that. Alright, very cool. So now we have our character animated in our background. So I really hope this tutorial helped you out and you learned how you can create some very simple artwork for yourself and animate it for a real pixel art game. If you like this tutorial, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. My name's Jason and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll be sending you many more videos just like this one. If you're interested in learning how to create pixel art, I have an in-depth course that teaches you how. Go ahead and click on the link in the description and that will allow you to enroll in the course right away.